Okay, it is exactly 1.30 here in the US, and I'm pretty sure it's 7.30 in Africa. Let's get started. Good day, everyone, and thanks for streaming with us today on Healthy Living with Bofa. We do appreciate your genuine love, your dedication, and your support for this show. I'm Betsy Olai Kafolani Akino Sotu, aka Bofa. Today, we have an amazing, outstanding woman on the interview segment whose our passion is to promote and protect the health of our people and the community. Of course, on this program, we all know that it's all about impacting others through what? Through health and wellness. On this program, we emphasize holistic health beyond the plate. I mean, what you have on your plate. We focus on nourishment through primary foods, which I've mentioned multiple times on this program, which means there are many areas of life that impact your short and long-term health, just like the food on your plate. I mean, the food you eat regularly, such as your relationship with people, your career, your spirituality, physical activity, environment, and so on. And that is the reason why we feature experts, professionals from various fields, from health to nutrition, agriculture, education, entertainment, food production industries, community service, and more. We invite these professionals, these experts, experienced people on this program every Sunday to educate and empower us in different areas of their expertise. So, Today, we are here on the same mission. Please take a seat and relax. Before we roll the camera, let me let you into the question of today. Remember, we always have questions on this program for you to know how healthy you are and to also know who are actually eating healthy food we are talking about. So today's question is, is my diet or your diet balanced if I eat rice and fish soup? It could be vegetable soup. It could be just ordinary soup. So if I eat any diet, I mean food, like rice and soup, the very say vegetable soup, is my diet balance. Do I have all the nutrients my body needs in this plate? Put your comment right below the video. We'll get back to you after the program. Right now, let's take a break. When we return, it's our health corner. Thanks for watching Healthy Living with Bofa.
The following content for this segment is obscure, grotesque, and very detailed. Viewer's discretion is advised. Hello ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to Living Healthy with Bofa channel. Last week we discussed respiratory system and how it affects in your everyday life, including now that the pandemic has uprised and has affected the respiratory system more than ever. This week our topic is skin disease. Yes, I said skin disease. Now, let's jump right into it. Meet skin disease. Skin disease is any disease or disorder that affects the human skin. They have a wide variety of causes. For example, skin rashes caused by Lyme disease. Visible alterations in the texture of skin, such as rashes and hives, can be indicative of a serious disease. Now, what are the causes of skin disease? Bacteria trapped in skin pores or hair follicles, fungus, parasites, microorganisms living on the skin, viruses, weakened immune system, that is a big one, contact with allergen, irritants, or any other personal's infected skin, genetic factors. Next. Types and treatments. Types consist of, number one, eczema, number two, psoriasis, number three, Pimples and acne, number four, blackheads, number five, moshea, number six, ithoitis, number seven, vitiligo, number eight, hives, and number nine, seborrheic dermatitis. Now, our treatments consist of antihistamines, secondly, medicated creams and ointments, thirdly, antibiotics, fourthly, vitamins or steroid injections, fifth, laser therapy, and lastly, antifungal and infectious skin disease. Pimple are a condition resulting from clogged or plugged pores present under the skin. Now, acne is a long-term skin condition that occurs when dead skin cells or oil from the skin clogged hair follicles. Typical features of this condition include blackheads or whiteheads, pimples, oily skin, and possible scarring. Next, eczema, which is very common. A group of skin conditions characterized by red itchiness rashes caused by overreactive response of the body's immune system. Next, we have psoriasis, a chronic skin disease which results in scaly, often itchy areas and patches. Lastly, ichthyosis. It is a genetic disorder that results in a thickened skin over nearly the entire body at birth. Simple ways to prevent skin disease. Start with bathing. It is essential to personal hygiene. It is gradually remove natural body oils. Lack of personal hygiene can cause diseases of the skin. Next, moisturize. Apply cream or moisturizers after you step out the shower or bath as they help in sealing the moisture in your skin. Then we have sun protection. Protect your skin from sun's harmful rays when a sunscreen lotion. Overexposure to the sun can lead to skin cancer. Now smoking, we see in everyday life. Quit while you can. I can't stress this enough. Important, exercise. Exercise can even if it's just a brisk walk for like 30 minutes a day. Lastly, diet. Your diet should be rich in fruits, whole grains, and vegetables. A balanced diet must contain adequate amounts of nutrients. You will learn more in the nutrition segment. Now we have our key takeaways. Your skin serves many purposes. It is waterproof and shields for your organs from harmful elements, as well as plays an important role in immunity. Lastly, this one is going to shock you. Your skin is not immune to infections and diseases. Therefore, while boosting your immune system eternally, you are as well preventing your skin from harmful bacteria that can damage your skin. That is all we have for this week, ladies and gentlemen. See you next week. We're living healthy with Bofa channel. Remember, I love you, God love you, and love yourself. Okay. Wow. I guess it's right here on time. You can beat that. Thank you so much. All right, before we move on, let's see what we have today. 
All right, let's do this. Okay. I just mentioned before we take a break and you know find ourselves in the nutrition segment. I mentioned earlier that we have a guest, an amazing guest on the show today. Trust me, it's someone you don't want to miss speaking, talking to us today. I know a lot of people are on this program waiting for today to see this beautiful and amazing woman who has been doing wonderfully in our community. I mean, in Nigeria precisely. My goodness, she's here to, with us right on time. All right, let's get started. Welcome back to Health and interview segment. In case you're just joining us, we are now on interview segment with experts. We tag this segment, interview with expert. Why do we do that? Because we have an experience, experts that always come on this program every Sunday to educate, sensitize, and as well empower us on what I call healthy living. And I've been saying this on this program every time, multiple times, that when it comes to wellness, it is not about the food on our plate. No, it is about everything around us. Being healthy in all areas of life, that is what wellness is all about. Today, like I said, I have an amazing woman, wonderful woman, who has been making sure, especially in the disability community, to see our people living their best, not enjoying themselves, being safe, and so on. Mrs. In the freaking Andrew Asian. She is the one on the program today as our guest. I'm gonna correct this. She is Miss, not Mrs. In case you are looking for a beautiful woman, you have one now. Just contact me, okay? All right, Miss Andrew has a bachelor degree and master's degree in human physiology and public health with various trainings and certifications. She is a certified management consultant, disability advocate, and a motivational speaker with over 15 years of experience in the nonprofit sector. Ms. Andrew is the coordinator of Bold Hearts Network, a network of a beautiful outstanding ladies with disability in Nigeria. Ms. Andrew is a Mandela Washington Fellow, a United States Exchange Alumni Program, President Barack Obama's flagship and inaugural Young African Leaders Initiative. She is also an African Change Maker Fellow. Note that, Change Maker. Miss Freaky, I call her and everybody around her as she wants to be addressed. Miss Freaky is a researcher in the public health space whose focus is on person 
with visibility. She is the executive director at Freaky Andrew Asian Care Foundation. Wow. For someone to decide and found it, a foundation, that person must be an humanitarian person. She is. We can't beat that. So she has the love of people in our soul, spirit, and body. Now, let's meet her and see how wonderfully she's been doing it. Let me let you know this. Miss Andrew is also in this community I call persons living with disability. She is a wheel rider. I mean, you understand what I mean? Please welcome Mrs. I keep saying Mrs. I think I have to get to the <laughs> man today. It is time to welcome Miss Andrew K. Andrew Estee, Miss Freaky, call her Freaky. Miss Freaky, you're welcome on Elder Living with Bo for today. Look thank you, thank you. <laughs> you, see, you look, at that, look at that beautiful face. Let me bring her up here. Let's have it together. I'm also beautiful. You are not the only one that is beautiful. I'm beautiful. Yes. You are beautiful. Yes, all women are. are beautiful, right? We are all beautiful. Yes, are. Welcome <laughs> on Healthy Living with Bufa. How are you doing? I'm very fine. Thank you very much. It is such a pleasure. I've been looking forward to today for a very long time, and it's such a pleasure. Thank such you. a pleasure. <laughs> Thank you so much. First, let me appreciate you for coming on the program today. It is such an honor for me to take you out of your busy schedule. Even though today is Sunday, we have a lot of people that, that is, they are busy today. They have one or two things that they couldn't do on you know weekdays, then they do it on Sunday. You can as well have the same thing in mind to do, but you let those things aside and join us just because you have the love of your people in your art. Thank, Thank you so much. I really appreciate this. Thanks for giving me this honor and this opportunity to bring this beautiful face on air, on cyberspace for everybody to see. First, let's meet Miss Freaky without wasting much of our time. Who is Miss Freaky? Let us into your journey of your life both the beautiful and ugly parts and all the challenges you have been going through. Let us into it. Thank you very much. Hi, everybody. It's such a pleasure to be on um, Healthy Living with Bofa TV. My name is Ndifreke Andrew Essien. And like um, Bofa really said, everybody calls me Freki. Um, like, it's like Freki, Freki, Freki. It's, I think it's easier, I guess. Um, I was born many years ago um, to a family. I'm the first in the family of six. Um, brought up, um, you know, in a humble environment. No issues, no concerns. I hit all the milestones where I was supposed to hit them nursery school primary school secondary school and then i went to university in my fourth year in the university on the 26th of december precisely i was involved in a road traffic accident and what that led to was spinal cord injury um, that resulted in series of surgeries that led me to having to use a mobility aid specifically a wheelchair Moving on since that 2002, when I had that accident on the 26th of December, the journey has been one of a lot of building of resilience, courage, self-confidence, be able to put myself back in my story. Mm. I'm grateful that looking on 18 years later today, and after a lot of huddles, for example, one of them was when I had done rehabilitation and tried to get myself back to school because I was still, you know, a university student. As at the time I had the accident, you know, um, because of um, facilities or lack of facilities as it were, 
I was stopped from continuing in um, my primary course, which was medicine and surgery at that time. And um, of course, that would be infringing on my, on my rights today. But that happened then. But I'm still grateful for the courage not to give up on myself because what I did was with a lot of support, you know, from family, from friends internally and from God, I was able to still go back to school, get a BSc in human physiology, get a master's in physiology, get another master's in public health and currently working on my um, PhD. Um, today, um, I haven't gone through and seen two sides of the coin as it were, which is living without a disability and then living with a disability. I have in my work in the nonprofit sector, apart from nonprofit leadership management, have um, devoted myself to a lot of disability advocacy because I understand how it, um, the society as it were in Nigeria, you know, and um, concerns when it comes to disability and then being a woman can affect you from living your life of purpose. So in a nutshell, Lifreke Andre Asien is a bold, um, saved, and a very determined young lady who has not allowed the adversity of life to put her out of her story. I'm still achieving, I'm still working um, towards even doing more. So it's such a pleasure to be here. Thank you very much. Please unmute yourself. Sorry about that. It's such an emotional um, day for me to hear all this you, 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 you went through before you could be who you are today. And I'm so impressed. Even with your limitations, you still climb that mountain. Thank you so much. Thank you so much. Um, listening to all you've said, and I also read your background when it comes to educational background, and that allowed me to put all my questions together. First, I'm going to start from public health, which is one of your uh, profession, you know, your background in career, in life. I know it is health public offices job to prevent people from getting sick or injured in the first place. I also know that you, as a public health officer, you are responsible to promote wellness. I mean, by encouraging healthy behaviors. First, let us know how the country, I mean, our country, Nigeria, is right now especially at the time of this global public health you know, crisis. How strong and healthy is the community and the people in it right now? Okay, thank you very much for the question. As we all know, early um, last year, 2020, the world was hit with a global pandemic by um, COVID-19. And when it came to the shores of the country um, and with the world as it were, everyone was still trying to figure out what it was and how it was trans um, transmissible, how, you know, how deadly it was until it was declared a pandemic. Um, what I saw in Nigeria was that um, we had to get a lot of answers from where everybody else was getting answers. Um, the focal um, organization being the World Health Organization, being that the virus was new, everybody was learning about it. Now, the thing about our health system in Nigeria is that it's already, it's, it's a bit weak, it's weak, it's porous because number one, we have very low financing, you know, for the health sector as it were, and facilities are not at its best to even um, promote universal health coverage. So what happened with the pandemic was a lot of scattering that's trying to find our footing to ensure that um, we do not get um, the worst heat of it. Now, the beautiful thing about the pandemic was that I think we had a lot of insight because it involved the Western world where we could learn from them. Um, the problem that I had with some of the responses, however, were that it took us time to um, generate in-country responses, that's responses that are tailored to our country dynamics. For example, um, everybody was going on lockdown. It was essential, but it was very expensive for us as a country because we do not have um, social services as it were. Our social service structure is not as strong as it would be in the Western world. And what that happened was that in the face of the pandemic, people began to face 
other issues like loss of livelihoods, um, loss of um, um, sources of income, um, children were no longer in school. And that is something that we're working on seriously to move away from. Now, presently where we are, as it were, where we have the second wave of the pandemic, we've learned a lot about COVID-19. And I think what's happening in Nigeria is that as opposed to a lot of institutionalized care where we're being enforced to do some of the preventive measures, we've learned the preventive measures. We have been told what the preventive measures are. And it's being encouraged that individuals make it a lifestyle, practice it. They're really simple. So practice the simple things of washing your hands, avoiding crowded areas. If you find yourself in a crowded place, wear a mask. Basic things that will prevent COVID-19. And I think it's the responsibility of every individual in Nigeria, whether you believe it or not, to do these simple, basic things. You know, when people argue with me, I'm like, if the things that you are asked to do are really simple. What is the argument? What is then washing your hands properly for 20 seconds? So these are the emphasis. This is where we are now. And then um, everybody's concerned because um, the new strain is, you know, a bit more um, transmissible and all of that. And WHO has said, still stick with the preventive measures that, you know, we worked out they work it's better to prevent than to cure i mean that is the motto of any public health official it is better to prevent than to start looking for treatment or cure now we're in the phase where vaccines everybody's expecting vaccines you know and as it was rolled out by the executive director of the national and primary health care development agency in our country we're expecting the vaccines to come in um, we're looking at later gen late january or early february things are being put in place at federal national at national state and local government um, level through the primary health care development board so things are being put in place nafdac is on board to ensure that processes go through that is not um, we're not like a waste land or a trial land like people are concerned about so every agency you know that works with vaccines is working to ensure that when the vaccines do come in um, that finally it is shared with fairly and equitably i think the roller plan is healthline workers frontline front line workers first then the elderly and people with underlying conditions, which is persons with physical, some people with physical disability, and then the general public, as it were. So this is where we are at, you know, in response to the global pandemic. Thank you so much. God bless you. I, I listened to you talking, and all you've said, I, I, I got something. All that you've been talking about, you know, the um, precautions, how we have to be. Um, properly, you know, observe this, the standard precautions. Now, do you want us to believe, because all you say, I, I get something that all these are coming from individual, you know, them to do what is right. Are you telling us that the government are also in, in their proper, you know, um, uh, decision when it comes to making sure that all the people, I mean, uh, you know, the citizens are safe. What are those things that the government have put in place? Something that we can all, you know, people living in diaspora, we can just go home and rest our head that our people back home, they are in safe hands, in safe hands in, with their government. So do you want to tell us that the government are doing what they're supposed to do? They are putting things in place. They are, you know, um, giving what they needed to give to the, um, the people. Are you telling us that they are all providing this? What the local, the federal, and the state government, do you see them in action being responsible for all they needed? Because here we have a lot of things given out a lot of, you know, when it comes to um, sanitizer, um, healthcare, you know, facilities, and all that's like that, including uh, palliatives. So do you want to tell us that the government are doing their best? Okay, so as it were, um, like I said, the COVID-19 pandemic has been in phases. You know, when we had the lockdown, we had the whole palliative um, 
phase where you know there were issues with um, um, how fair the palliatives were being shared. Persons in the disability communities, a lot were excluded from the measures by way of food palliatives. And a lot of civil society organizations had to step in to you know, bridge some of the gaps. As it's where government does its part and individuals do their part, civil society organization does their part. Um, and we cannot ever say that anybody gets it 100%. That is the truth. Now, currently where we are, I think that when the presidential tax force on COVID-19, what they normally do is that they bring out directives. But as it were in Nigeria, um, state governments are allowed to make decisions on how they roll out the advice brought on by the presidential tax force on COVID-19. For example, different, because different states are hit at different levels of COVID-19, so there is no federalized, per se, response. Every state is allowed to rule out you know, on their own. So for example, in River State, schools were open here in January as it was planned. That's mm -hmm. the second phase of the first term. What the government now did was to ensure that public and private schools had what was necessary for students to return to school. So I think for now, role, the role of government has been more of supervisory, as it were, to ensure that, um, okay, they, so they say things like, um, like in River State, for large gatherings or gatherings, um, the whole capacity should not be more than 50%. And so once in a while, they send out tax force to come and look out and see how churches are not being overcrowded or how things are being overcrowded, are not being overcrowded. It. Of course, I see a lot of lethargy that they're being as trying to pursue and enforce. There's a bit of lethargy, there's a bit of tiredness in enforcing the rules, which is why I still bring back to the individual that even though government um, has its role to play in protection of the citizens, but I would en encourage you to protect yourself and your family. Because when the brunt of the illness comes and the bills come, it's not government that pays. So mm -hmm. I still bring my emphasis back to the individual that while we're insisting and we keep putting government to take on their responsibilities, where you can do your part in public health, where you can do your part, please do your part. That's the, that's, that's the, the, the watchword. We'll continue to push government to do what they need to do. But mm -hmm. you as a person, you already know the little things to do. They're not much, but they can save your life. Great. Great. This, this is, is outstanding. outstanding. Uh, there's a video that I shared this morning here in the, U in the U.S. where a woman, uh, a white lady, went to a store to buy maybe coffee or something, and she, they don't want to sell her. She's not allowed to stay or to, to get whatever she, she really wanted. But to my surprise, I see police coming in to, you know, to evacuate this woman. Now, my problem with that is, do we have to be forced to do things that we, we know that this is, is about our life? It's not about government. It's not about anybody but my life, your life. That's the way I look at the things this morning. And when I saw the video, I was like, my goodness, what is the right, the constitution, the, the, the calling, the spirit, you know, all this Bible, you know, verses. In this, we are trying to save, even if you don't, you, you, you don't care about your life, at least the person next to you, you should be able to care for that if you don't care. So what I'm saying is, if government is not doing their part, I believe individually, we should also do our own part by saving our lives and other people there. The thing that we ask us to do, those precautions, the standard precautions, it's not that difficult like you said. And thank God that we have somebody like you that can come on the program today and see emphasize on this, that this is a must for everybody. Even if you don't have food on your plate, it is a must for you to save your life by, you know, staying away from large gathering and, you know, keep distance from anybody because you don't know who is carrying the virus. That's the, that's the most ugly part of it. You don't know because it's not right there in front of us. It's not written in front of us. All the signs and symptoms, you're not going to see it because it's a regular symptoms that we've been having even before this virus <laughs> hit us. So to know who is carrying it is going to be too difficult for us to know. The only thing I'm going to 
buy your idea and also agree with you is to tell viewers, people out there, let's just follow this, you know, it's, it's a regular thing that we've been doing. That's not a big deal. Normally, we have to leave, you know, when we come in, we watch our ends, things that we've been doing before. That's not a big deal. You can't go out and you want to enter into your house. You just take the food and start eating. You must watch your hands. So this is one of the precautions we were asked to do. And I don't think it should be difficult for us. Thank you so much, Ms. Fricky. Now we are on disability and vulnerability. Ms. Fricky, I've seen a lot of your work that you have put together in the PWD's community, especially among the women. I've heard about you. I've seen what you've done. And you also, you know, express them. You, 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 you. You demonstrate that to me when I was talking to you over the phone. As a public health officer, tell us how you've been doing it, publicly, privately, protecting and preventing people in your community. Now it is about you protecting people individually. I'm not talking about working for somebody to go and do it. That means you were asked to do so. But personally, tell us what you've been doing privately and publicly to save lives of others. Okay, thank you very much. You're so um, since our theme has been on COVID-19, so I'll just stay with that for a bit. So 2020, we had to focus a lot of our efforts, you know, um, by way of in, in the disability community. Number one was information. Information sharing became a bit tricky because a lot of persons with disability were not receiving the right information as it were uh, when it came to COVID-19 because a lot of them were getting information from different sources and the issue of fake news. So the fears were elevated. So we had to start programs. I have a program called Wool TV where we brought on experts and we talked and we began to and break it down, the COVID-19, and then bring it to the homes of persons with disabilities. And we came up with a lot of practical solutions for persons with disabilities as regards prevention, which we communicated. And so we used the cyberspace to do that. Mm -hmm. Then through Fake Air Foundation, that's my organization, we went into communities because I also found out that there was a bit of polarization when it came to the urban areas and then the rural communities when it came to understanding COVID-19 understanding the preventive measures. So we took some of our interventions to women with disabilities in communities, where we had practical demonstrations of um, hand washing um, for them so that they would know. It's something that they know how to do already. And, and so we just showed them how to do it properly. We even had them demonstrate it in different languages just to break it down and specifically for women with disabilities. Um, we went on further, went on further to not just stop there, um, like I said, there were a lot of issues when it came to food palliative. There was a real hunger in the land. And um, through well-meaning partners, we were able to bring that to women. Like I said, our target was women because I, we believe strongly that if the woman is um, um, strong and healthy, the family somehow is covered. So, so we focused and we, we targeted the woman and then we took food palliative. We actually did that to women with disabilities. And then the last phase of our intervention when it came to the COVID-19 strategy was that we did what we called self-care packages containing just specifically the hand sanitizers, the mobility aid disinfectants and things like that. And then we showed them how to clean their assistive devices, clean surfaces around them, how to engage people if they want to assist you and things like that. So those are some of the practical that, things that um, I did personally and through my organization to, you know, involve persons with disabilities, uh, senior people, the disability stakeholders were able to engage in policy reformations. But what I did was to take it to the community mm -hmm. where that's direct to persons with disabilities. We also carried out through a coalition surveys just to have a feel of how persons with disability felt with respect to COVID-19. We saw the fears, we saw the doubts, we saw all that. And that informed some of um, you know, our um, information that we passed, making it as simple and as basic as possible so that the fears were elevated. Currently, where we are is pushing people to, because like I said, livelihoods were affected a lot more than even COVID. So where we are is building resilience, trying to encourage people who are feeling you know, 
um, a bit concerned and down that, oh, I struggled so much and COVID came and wiped everything to build back, you know, you know, we had building back better. So these are some of the things publicly and privately that we've done as regards COVID-19 specifically wow. in the community. Wow, that, my goodness. I just, all I'm going to say is God bless you because this you have done, um, some people we expect it from the government and right there you are doing it for your people. And that is what I always tell people. Don't wait for anybody to impact your life. Do it first and see if you won't be able to do to others. And that is what you've been doing. And I'm, I'm, I'm so impressed seeing you doing all this together. We are still on your contribution in the community. Can you take us through your program? I mean, your network, Bold Hearts Network. I mean, the network that, that beautify, that's the way I'm going to put it, that beautify women out there for beautiful, outstanding ladies with disability in Nigeria. Can you take us through this network? Okay, so um, thank you very much. So early in 20, 2017, 2018, there about, um, a senior colleague of, of ours, one of our mentors, you know, she had a program where she brought persons with disabilities together every year. Okay. But then she felt that um, women with disabilities needed to have a niche in the space where we talked about things that concerned us as it were, we're able to rally around ourselves and support ourselves. So we came together, a few of us, and then we constituted and we formed Bold Hearts Network. And I remember when we were looking for what to call it, you know, we we're calling different names. And then the, the, the name just came Bold. And I was like, okay, so B, beautiful, O, outstanding, L, ladies with D, disabilities. And wow. even, if, if, even when you don't do anything, once you just say Bold, there's this thing that just, you know, comes upon you like, yes, please, yes, please. Wow. <laughs> <laughs> that was an amazing thing to do, trust me. I wasn't even looking, I must confess, I wasn't looking at that bold to be the acronym of that beautiful, outstanding ladies. I don't, I'm just hearing it now from you. Go ahead. <laughs> so, so we came up with that. So um, we use Facebook as our platform. We got ladies coming together. And basically it's just a simple um, premise is um, shared experiences, shared lived experiences of women with disabilities, because I believe that from our stories, we can strengthen others. The truth of the matter is that women with disabilities face a lot of seclusion. There's this thought that I'm alone in this, but in sharing stories, in being out there, in putting your achievements out there, I've seen a lot of people pick up courage and do amazing things just because they saw another woman with disability do it. And what we've done is we're able to bring the stories to bear. You know, and Bold Heart Network, we continue to have seminars, capacity buildings, all about building the capacity of the woman. For example, still in the year 2020, with all of the COVID-19 raving, as you well know, gender-based violence became a major issue. And for the disability community, as it were, it was even it, it was a deeper issue for us. And so in Bold Heart, what we did was we had a capacity building seminar where we brought ladies with disabilities online and physically to train them on. Um, it was called silence is not golden to be able to speak up when they are being abused because one right. of the issues is poor reporting you know that causes the perpetrator to continue and we've seen a lot of positive results so things like this is like saying iron sharpening iron i mean that's the premise of both hat mm -hmm. so um and also we have both tv where we just bring still women with disabilities to share their stories Honestly, in hearing the stories of others, we've seen people pick up courage, do businesses they didn't think they could do, then step out and do things that they didn't think they were worthy of because they've seen that they are, they are worthy of, you know, opportunities in life. So it's, it's a real pleasure to have that, have that niche called, you know, Bold Hearts Network. I mean, I have Faker Foundation, but it's really beautiful to have um, Bold Hearts Network, which is a network specifically for women with disabilities. Excellent, excellent. Thank you so much, Mitch Freaky. I'm so, I'm overjoyed. I'm just listening to you talking about last time when um, I think Mrs. Alter and Dr. Ejuma, when they came to the program, I, I told them, actually, uh, Mrs. Alter, I said, women are taking over. We are taking over. We started from the US now. 
our, our vice president, president is a woman. And we have a lot, a lot, a lot of women in the Senate and in the House. Why that is not happening in Nigeria, I have no idea. But I believe that one day we're going to take over because men are not doing what they're supposed to do. And look at you right there, doing wonderfully in the community. Who does that? Tell me, I'm just so happy listening to you when it comes to, this is, the, you see, this is the way we can strengthen each other. We can impact each other. Like I said earlier with you before the program, I said, giving is not only about giving money. You can give your ideas, your initiative, you can impact others and you see that person doing great than giving the person money. So that is, to me, that is what giving it's all about. That is what you're doing and that is what I'm doing right now. So something you're doing and you're not getting paid, no recognition, you're not doing it for, um, to be, um, I, I don't know, just you're, just you're just doing it from your heart. You know, that's what we're both doing. And now I'm going to take you back to the same topic we are, which is disability. Now, as an advocate for persons living with disability, how do you think the, the rights of this particular community, PWDs, can be protected? Because a lot, a lot of them were complaining, even when I find myself in Nigeria, they complained that, you know, we're not getting what we're supposed to get. People are stigmatizing us. We're, they are denying us a certain things. You know, our rights are not being protected. I heard about this whenever I'm in Nigeria. Now, how do you think this rights of this community can be protected? Or do you want to tell us that the rights has been protected? Go ahead. When it, when it comes to disability in Nigeria, it's, um, it's um, rather sad that um, we are where we are. However, given that we, uh, we just celebrated the second anniversary of the National Prohibition, Disability Prohibition Act, as prohibition of discrimination against persons with disability, mm -hmm. one can see or say that we are making some, some strides when it comes to the protection of the rights of persons with disability in Nigeria. The journey is still far and the journey will not end now. But, <laughs> but one thing is that at least we're beginning to have systems in place because initially it looked like um, you know, persons with disability were just rallying, fighting. So when we begin to have things like the laws protecting, you can go back and say, okay, maybe this law where my right is infringed on can protect me. These are some of the things that we're doing. So currently when it comes to the rights of persons with disability, it's too strong, yeah? So no, it's three though. So what we're doing a lot, a lot of disability advocates, what we're doing is number one, we are trying to make government accountable because understanding the 30 million people in Nigeria um, at least 30 million people in Nigeria living with one disability or the other, and that they are citizens of this country first before persons with disability. That comes very secondary. So we're trying to hold government at different levels, you know, responsible states that have laws to make sure that the laws are working. And then this, spread, this law that has come into place to make sure that it's working. Then the second thing that we're doing, like I said, three terms, is sensitizing the public on what the rights of persons with disability are letting them understand that if you discriminate against a person with disability from a child to an adult, that there are fines and there are um, consequences to that action. And then the third thing is also educating persons with disabilities themselves too, because some of us don't know our rights. We don't know what it is. So when, when our rights are trampled on, we take it and say, yes, it's my lot. Uh, can they see it? You know, persons with disabilities sometimes either react violently or they become emotional or angry. Meanwhile, you can get that thing done, you know, if you are able to, if you know that it's, they've infringed on your right, you can now stand boldly and try to claim back, you know, what your right is. So it's a three-pronged approach. We're trying to get government to be accountable um, for the laws and put in better laws and do what they said that they would do to protect the right of persons with disabilities. Mm -hmm. And then we're trying to educate the public, especially persons who offer public service. Your buildings need to be accessible for crying out loud. 
you offer a public service and your the people that you're offering a service to are a wide array of people. There are a myriad of people. There are a mixture of people. Some of them are on wheels. Some of them are crawling. Some of them cannot tear. You should be able to cater to them to a great extent. And that's why we are here. We say, if you don't know, ask us. We can put in the know on how best to be more inclusive. And then, of course, to persons with disabilities, you know your rights and demand for it. My God, you are deserving of your rights. So these are the. Wow. This is um, let me just um, interrupt you right there because I also have a foundation right here in the U.S., which we have, you know, branch in Nigeria that we serve persons living with disability. Can you believe that we have not gotten the office? Because I insisted that. All our board of directors insisted that we must have a place that is accessible for these people. If they're not going to get it, if we found something manageable, we're going to make it accessible for these people. And I think the government should look into this as well. We've heard a lot of, you know, um, dignitaries that come on this program from, you know, this community. And I've talked and talked and talked, addressed this issue of accessibility with them. Um, from the president, you know, um, the president, Mrs. Um, forget her name. The president for PWD, she was on our program, a kite, yes. I talked about it. And I believe with this, you know, my effort, your effort, coming together, talking about it, you know, protesting in a, on this type of, you know, program, they will do something about it. Maybe they're going to put it into law or make it as a, um, one of their regulations when they're building their offices, their, you know, facilities. They just have to do something. Yes, and exactly. I think Sorry, yeah, it's addressed you know, in the Prohibition Act, you know, and it's just to get people to comply, to take it seriously. And so we continue to push, like you said, platforms mm -hmm. like this continue to inform. That's because right. um, like a learned friend of mine said, she said, ignorance of the law is not an excuse. It's not, a, it's not, a, it's not. A, yes, true. Thank you for picking us through your community because it's now your community this is my community if i come to nigeria it is my community so thank you for taking us through your community um this the, the section we're about to go in few seconds is the last section in this interview and it's also my favorite section why because it has to do with health and wellness and that is all i'm in for so all of the things come after, right after, even though they are first primary food, we still have to talk about other things to make it work, to make it balanced. Now we are on health and wellness. And when it comes to wellness, women are the most, you know, how life puts it, we are the one that need wellness most. We are. I know some people will be wondering, well, well, why is she saying women need wellness than men? Because I've been receiving message on my phone now when I say <laughs> when I say women are taking over. <laughs> they are sending me messages. Why is women taking over? The answer is because men are not doing the right things. That's why we want to take over and see if we will be able to fix all the mess caused by men out there. Am please, I men, wrong? please, men, we we'll work together. Don't worry. No, no fear. <laughs> so, when it comes to wellness, we need it more than men. Why? Number one, women have more than opening in the body than men that we have to take care of. That's where your wellness starts from, right? Then the good nutrition plays a fundamental role in human health survivor and development and when i say development it means right from the day of conception right because this means that the day of your conception you need an optimum nutrition during the first 1000 days that is between you know um women's pregnancy to child's second birthday that is second um, 
second year birthday of the child, right? So when the woman, and the woman that wants to carry that baby must be fully and nutritiously fed and taken care of. If you are not healthy, how will you be able to carry the baby? So the women need this wellness, the good nutrition, good health first before men, right? And besides, we are giving back to that man right there. So we may need that. We also stress more than men out there. We stress ourselves too much. We take care of the, we carry the baby for nine months. We give back to the baby. We start bathing. We start, when it's time to go to school, we are there take the child to school, bring the child back, do this and do that. We need strength to do all this. I'm not saying, men, don't get me wrong, because I don't want you to nail me to the cross. All I'm saying is, women need this thing than men, because all this, you know, altars, activities, everything that I've just mentioned, we carry out this. And besides that, when it comes to, women in our society talk about association churches and other things we're doing in our community you find more women than men investing their energy their time their money in everything put before them now i want you to tell us your advice on wellness in terms of self-maintenance for women, what is your advice on wellness in terms of okay. self-maintenance? Go ahead. Thank you. Thank you very much. My advice on wellness would be to guard your heart and your mind. Mental wellness is like the driver of physical care. If your mind is not healthy, if you don't have mental wellness, there is no translation to physical wellness. If you have issues that you are troubled about, and trust me, there is a battle in the mind, especially in the woman's mind, juggling and settling her responsibilities with the you know issues. Then hormonal, there is a lot going on there. Mm-hmm. So when it comes to mental wellness for women, I'll say we have to be intentional about it. One of the ways that you can achieve this is that in the hustle and in the bustle, I had to learn this once in a while, take some time for yourself, just to center yourself or else you will feel like a rag doll, drag left, right, center. If it's not children, if it's not husband, if it's not job, it can be very overwhelming. But I'm asking that once in a while, just find a quiet place for your, it, it, it can be very healing for yourself where you just, you and yourself, if you want to meditate, you meditate, you want to study the word, whatever it is you want to do, it doesn't have to be too long. For that small, small, it can be anywhere, a toilet, anywhere, for that small space that you give yourself, that calming can allow you to be able to respond properly to things that you see around. So number one, mental wellness. And then number two, for women, please, for crying out loud, we do a lot physically, that is, we exert ourselves a lot, and so it will be good to have balanced nutrition. You are the caregiver. It's good to have balanced nutrition to, to be able to have the necessary energy you need to do all that you need to do. Um, um, Bofa, you agree with me that women are great multitaskers. We can bring 10 things at the same time. And very well, very, very well. But you need to keep your energy levels up. And then the final thing I would like to say is please take care of yourself. Sleep when you need, if you can, just find a way and sleep. I know it can be hard. I find it sometimes that when I want to sleep, my mind is still trying to solve out <laughs> solve thing, a million yeah. and one thing. But sometimes just shut down. It, it's mm-hmm. okay. So because there's no time, so I would just like to say that these are the key things. These are things I do, and I know that they will go mental wellness, finding that five minutes of just silence, uh, is eating properly, and then finally just once in a while rest. Yeah, rest. <laughs> Thank. You. Wow. My people back home. Everywhere you are in the world, you just listen to our experts when it comes to public health, telling us to take things easy 
I'm not the only one saying it. I've been saying it for, even before I started this program, I've been saying it one-on-one, -on -one, you know, putting out videos, writing my head talk, I mean, head tips and stuff. I've been saying it all along, all along. And now I have an expert, another expert that have been, that, um, that is here today telling us to do the same thing. She said, I'm going to repeat. If you want to write it down, write it down. And I pray you are able to do it because women, you know, we, 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 we tend to see things like, you know what? It doesn't matter. Let me do it. I'll do it later. No, we can do it. We just have to find a way of taking care of ourselves. And that's why you see a lot of people just collapsing, dying, when they're not supposed to die, when they're not supposed to get down on their bed. It, it's just too crazy because we have not been doing what we're supposed to do. Of course, we have to go to work. We need money to buy this food, but not every day, seven days in a week. You are allowed to work five days a week. So why don't you take that, those two days and relax? Rest, have time with your family, take a day out, do things that will relax your brain, that make you even look beautiful. Because today, our topic on health segment and at the same time on nutrition is about skin disease. Doing this, Miss Freaky just mentioned, we make your body, your skin look beautiful. If you relax your body, if you stress too much, all these fine lines, you look so agad. In fact, your beauty will just disappear. Please, let us take time. Relax. Eat balanced diet. Diet that is very rich in all these five to six nutrients. You can get it for, even from one food. I'm going to tell you shortly. So please, all we have been talking about, it's all about wellness, about health about good nutrition. And I want us to please and please, let's focus on this and do it. A lot of people died in this pandemic. It's not because they, um, they offend God or they offend virus that killed them. No, you never know what happened to them. Maybe their immune system are weak. Some are still in the hospital now fighting and struggling with their health because their immune system has been deteriorated. Please and please try as much as possible. Do something. You just have to do it. And that is only thing we need to do everything we have to do in life without good health. They say health is wealth. So if you are not healthy, no matter how rich or beautiful, the house you build, the cars, luxury cars you have, without good health, you are not a rich person. That's the way I look at it. Rich and wealth, they are, they are different things before me. To me, they are totally different things. So please, let's take notes on that and work on our health. Uh, Ms. Freaky, your last question is, um, is still on nutrition because we, I mean, on health and wellness. Now we want to go to nutrition. Let's have quickly, in a few minutes, your advice on importance of good nutrition for women. Why I focus on women? I mentioned it earlier that we need this thing more than men. All men need is to eat the food, put their two legs on the coffee table and watch TV. The next thing, get up, go to bed, sleep, get up the following day, go to work and come back. That's all they do. But we need more than that because we do more than what men do. One in a few minutes, advise us on good nutrition. All right, so um, one of the vital um, key nutrition for women is um, having um, um, food um, that um, increase your blood, that maintain your blood levels. Um, I just want to mention this because women every month we shed and um, um, it's important to ensure that you do not become anemic um, because you're not taking care of yourself. So one of the ways to get um, your blood to be at um, full bar <laughs> is to ensure that you eat lo loads of vegetables. Green vegetables are a good source of iron. So, because yeah. uh, I have a short time. So this is um, one thing that is crucial for women. Um, don't neglect your, um, your, your foods 
that would um, ensure that your blood levels are optimal because every month you shed and you need it. So that's my own um, nutrition. Thank you so much. Oh my goodness, your 30 to 35 minutes has been wonderful. It's been amazing. It's been informative. <laughs> I, can. I want to keep, you know, that, you know, talking and talking and talking. I'm like, you just have to look at the time. I love to have you on the program more than this 30 minutes or 35 minutes I gave you, but I'm so impressed. I'm happy having you giving us all this information. I may know them, but trust me, people out there, they have no idea. They don't have this information. And that's the more reason we bring somebody like you, people like you on this program to enlighten us, to inspire us, and also empower us. Because when you tell us the information we don't know, you empower us. And when you tell us your story, how you make it, how everything is beautiful for you from the ugly world, you also inspire us. And that is why I'm going to say thank you so much for coming on the program today. We do appreciate your time and your service to community on public health and safety. Thank you so much for being the voice, the caretaker, I mean caregiver for all our people back home. Thank you so much. And I want to see you coming back on this program. I'm sure when I call you, you will be right here. <laughs> Thank you so much. I'm blessed having you and my regards to everybody back home. Tell them I miss them. I love them. I can't wait to see them in a few minutes. I mean, a few months. <laughs> if this pandemic is over, we'll by God's grace. Thank you so much. It's such I've, been, a I've been dying. I've been dying thirsty to come to Nigeria. Trust me. I can now that this pandemic has been being a barrier for me, it makes me sick. My people know that if not for this thing, I would have been in Nigeria about three to four times a year. I love coming to my country because that's where my spirit so and body are so. Thank you so much for coming on the program. I really appreciate you. And I pray for good health that you need to move around, to do all this work for yourself and for the people. Thank you so much for coming. I'll see you Thank next you. time. Thank you. Bye. Okay. Um, wow. Wow, 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 wow. It's wow, isn't it? It is wow. My goodness. Okay, before we go to a nutrition segment, I would like us to do something. Take your pen and paper, because I need you to write something down. You can't be talking and talking, and we're not having, you know, um, something we can just go maybe tomorrow or next tomorrow or in the next few months and look at it. Okay, I need a question to answer. I think I heard about it on Beaufort TV. Let me just go and check it on my journal, my diary, my paper, whenever you write your information. So I'll do that when I come back. And I want you to just get your pen and paper because you need to write something down for me today. It's about skin disease. And a lot of people are going through, they are suffering from this. Some are contagious, some are not. So, but we need to talk about it to see if we can prevent this through the food on our table. So before we do that, I would like us to take a break. And when we return, it's gonna be health corner, I mean, nutrition corner as usual. So let's take a break when we return at our nutrition section. Okay, 
I said before the break that we are going to talk about skin disease. And today, in case you are just joining us, you know, for the first time, or you're joining us due to some things that delay you to join us, this is Healthy Living with Bofer, and we are now on nutrition segment. We just learned a few minutes ago from Health Corner about skin disease. Today, we're gonna be discussing the best food to keep your skin healthy. Now, the truth is this, and I want you to take note of this. If you are looking to make your skin look its best, along with smart habits, like wearing sunscreen every day, you must check out what is on your plate. Definitely, you want to do this. Because what you eat is what you are. And that is the talk for this section. You are what you eat. So from fighting, you know, free radicals to smoothing lines on your skin, on your forehead, some type of foods are packed with good nutrients for glowing your skin, which I'm going to tell you in a few seconds. There are plenty of options you can pick when it comes to regular grocery store. What matters most is your overall eating pattern. I mean, the point I'm making right here is most people need to eat more fruits and vegetables, cut down on sugar and salt, and choose all foods over processed food. Some people eat too much of processed food. They eat sugar, they eat salt. All these, you need to call down on them if you want to have a healthy skin. Trust me, you need to do this. There's no magic in doing this. It is a matter of making your choice to do this. Now, let's run through food that you can live on for your healthy skin. First one you want to do is you want to live on fatty fish. Fish is the best when it comes to meat. We have classes of meat. We have um, seafood, we have poultry, then we have beef. When it comes to seafood, that's when you see fish, you see lobster, you see shrimps, and so on. And when it comes to poultry, you see chicken, um, you see uh, fowl, you see um, what else, and so on. And when it comes to beef, you have lambs, you have sheep, you have cow, you have and all and on and on like that. So you want to live on fatty fish. Fish would definitely give you the best oil the healthy oil your body needs. You want to take or increase your oily fish, such as salmon, tilapia, sardine, mackerel, and other fish. These are considered oily fish. This fish I just mentioned, if you really want to get your fatty acid, go for salmon, tilapia, sardine, mackerel. You have mackerel in Nigeria. You have sandy in Nigeria. You have lapia in Nigeria. So get it. Anyone. You don't have to get all this fish I mentioned. You don't have to get all the fishes. Just get one out of three to four fishes that I mentioned. And they give you high concentration of essential fatty acid. And that's what we call acid. I mean, uh, omega-3 and omega-6. Fatty acid is known as omega-3 and 6. 
So you also want to eat vegetables like kale, spinach, and broccoli. Because your body needs antioxidants to really free you, I mean your body, your skin, from these radicals, the free radicals. And these free radicals can wreck your skin, wreck your body, damage your skin. So you want to include limes, lemon, berries, pears, peaches, apples, oranges in your food supply. So when you are going to the store or to the market, you want to make sure that you have all this I mentioned in your food supply. List them out. And I've always said it on the program. Whatever you are getting from the store, when you take yourself out of your house and you want to go for food shopping, you need to know what you're getting from those food you are purchasing from the store. If you don't know the nutrients you want to get that you, are, you, you, you receiving from the food you want to buy from the store, don't go to the store, please stay home until you realize or you know the exact nutrient you, your body needs and the exact food you are getting them from. Make no sense going to the store and start packing all this junk. So you need to do this. First, it's not about getting the nutrient from the, from the food. You will also save money. You'll be economical. You, 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 you know how to budget your spending. You won't just go to the store and start buying, buying, buying. And when you get home, all the food you bring home, nothing to make you look good, to make you healthy. Rather, it will cause damage. It will cause problem, disease, and so on for that body you're carrying around. Now, other food you want to experiment on are you want to live on avocado. Avocado is a very beautiful food, vegetable. It's very nice. It has oil, it has antioxidants, it has protein, and so on. You, want, or you also want to buy walnuts, sweet potatoes, red or yellow bell peppers, tomatoes, dark chocolate, green tea, red grapes, and so on. These are the things you need to put on your food list, if you really want to take care of your skin. I'm telling you this. And lastly, you want to eat food rich in selenium. Selenium is a mineral found in a wide range of foods. Also in water, you can get it in the water as well. That is why I said drink water regularly. Many people drink water once a day. Some don't even drink water at all. Maybe after two, three days, they, they remember that, oh, it's like I've never taken water. I didn't take it last, last night or I didn't take it yesterday. Who does that? Water, your body carries 70% weight of that water. When you weigh yourself, 70% of your weight is that water you are drinking. So if you don't drink water, you see what you're losing. So I've talked about water, what it does in the body, the benefit of that. So I'm not gonna go in detail to, in, in, uh, on that. So let's just run through the food that you can get this selenium from. The best food that can give you this antioxidant called selenium is from nuts. Seed, seed like sunflower and flax seed. You get it from it. You get it from vegetables like broccoli, garbage, uh, spinach, mushrooms, and so on. Vegetables. You also get it from seafood like shrimps, lobster, fish like snapper, tuna, salmon, tilapia, and so on. You get it from it. You get it from meat like lamb. You also get it. You also want to live on seed, like brown rice, lima rice, pinto beans, and so on. 
you want to live on cheese and egg. And if you can't get all this, because a lot of people can get some of the food I've just mentioned. If you can't get all this food, please look for supplement. Supplement made with all this food, especially fish oil, omega-3 and seeds, flaxseed oil. They come in capsule as well. Avocado oil and so on. And lastly, you also want to get sunscreen lotion or oil to protect your skin from sunlight during summer or if you live in a sunny country, a country that like Nigeria now, I'm not sure maybe the sun is, um, maybe your climate has been you know, deteriorating like America today, tomorrow. If you live in Africa, definitely you receive your direct sun, which will give you vitamin D, sure. But at the same time, too much of that sun can damage your skin. That is why you need to wear your sunscreen lotion. I tell you this, you need to do this. Trust me. Now, the bottom line is this. If all we believe it's about wellness, about eating good, eating healthy. What we eat can significantly affect our skin health. There's no doubt if you believe that, that there is a power in the food you eat, it will definitely significantly affect your skin health, that body you carry around. So it is a best choice for you and I to make. It is a best choice for us to make sure we are getting enough essential nutrients from each food we eat daily to protect our skin. The food mentioned earlier are great options to keep your skin healthy, strong, and attractive. Like I said earlier, this is our topic. We're going to talk about it next week, and that is going to be skin care. I want us to go deep into that. We're talking about skin disease today. Next week is going to be skin care. It's a two different topic. So we've talked about the disease you can get on that your skin. Now, either you have this disease or you don't have it, you still need to take care of that skin. You need to care for it. The same way you care for this mouth, the same way you care for your hair all the time, the same way you wear good and nice clothes every day, you need to take care of that skin. So that will take us to the skincare next week. And probably I will be honored to tell you my story, the reason why I am in this career, the reason why I found myself in this profession, the reason why I take decision to be an integrative nutrition specialist today, after all other degrees that is even more than this that I've had in my life, after all the experiences, after all the skills that I've acquired, I found myself in this profession. This is the least of what God has done for me when it comes to career in life. So I'll be honored and happy to tell you the reason why I'm in this career, empowering you, educating you today. So next week, be on this program. Join us next week and be inspired and see your life, your else looking great, beautiful, glowing like mine. So that is all for today on Healthy Living with Bofa. And thanks for giving us that opportunity to educate and empower you and as well inspire you today.
We appreciate your dedication, your love. Coming on this program every Sunday to support us. I'm honored, I'm inspired, I'm impressed, I'm loved. God bless you all. Until next week, we meet again. Be safe and healthy. Remember, wear your face mask, follow the standard precautions, stay away from gathering that can cost your life or probably take some life. Please, it is very important. We are stepping into greatness this week. You and I are stepping into abundance blessing this week. So I'll see you next week by God's grace. I love you. God loves you. And you know what you should do? Love yourself. So until next week, I love to see these beautiful faces doing wonderfully. Join me on this program. Thank you so much. God bless you. God bless me. See you next week. Bye.